Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for having me here. Um, I am going to talk to you today about how Via Studio, the company that I currently work for, used Algolia to build a really super search experience for cocktail recipes. <clears throat> As I said, my name is Mark Beek. Um, here are all of the links and ways to get a hold of me online, and I'll drop a link to this presentation in the chat after. Um, I've been at Via Studio for the last five years. Via Studio is a digital marketing agency based in Louisville, Kentucky in the United States, and we do websites and mobile apps and branding and all kinds of other neat things. Um, I'm fortunate I get to work with a lot of really talented people, and I get to do fun stuff every day. So. On to the exciting part, uh, Mr. Boston. <clears throat> We're going to talk about the company, Mr. Boston. We're going to talk about MrBostonDrinks.com, cocktail searching, and all kinds of other good stuff. A little background, Mr. Boston was a distillery founded in the 1930s in New England. Uh, they started publishing a the Mr. Boston Bartender's Guide, which had cocktail recipes, ingredient lists, instructions for how to make cocktails, um, and it was wildly popular for a long, long time. Um, in 2009, Mr. Boston was purchased by the Sazerac Bourbon Company here in Kentucky. As you may or may not know, uh, Kentucky is all about the bourbon stuff. And in 2012, they stopped publishing the print guide because everything was sort of moving online. So in 2016, Via Studio got to build a digital version of the bartender's guide, uh, which contained all of the recipe data for all of the different historical versions and all kinds of other things, which I will show you in a little bit. So let's talk about the platform. MrBostonDrinks.com itself is a single page application written in Angular 1 because this was five years ago. If we were doing it now, I'd probably, I'd probably do it in React. Other people would probably do it in Vue. Any one of those would be better than Angular 1. Um, on the back end, we have a Laravel site where the client can log in and manage all of the recipe data themselves. And every time they make a change to a recipe, it automatically pushes that data out to the Algolia index. So the index is constantly kept up to date. Um, this was super easy to do using Algolia's Laravel integrations. You can basically just attach to your Laravel model, and every time the model saves, it automatically calls a function which pipes the data out to Algolia, which was great. And then we have an API layer for the single page application to access. So there are some interesting challenges when it comes to searching for cocktail data. People come searching for lots of different things. Uh, sometimes people know the name of a particular recipe that they want to search for. Sometimes people want to search for an ingredient and see what they can make using that ingredient. Um, if you say, oh, I have vodka and lemons, what can I make for this party? Um, sometimes people want to know about specific instructions for cocktail techniques. There's lots of different ways to go about it. And so we wanted to make a search that would return useful results for all of those different cases. Um, and with Algolia, we came up with something pretty good that looks basically like this. And let's go ahead and switch over to the live site so you can see it in action. So here we have a nice big search box. Um, we could have done this as a complicated form where you had lots of options where you checked a box that said, I want to search for ingredients or checked a box that said, I want to search for recipes. But nobody wants to use a complicated search form. People just want to type something into a box and get back results that they find useful. So here we're using the Algolia JavaScript API. Um, so this is querying Algolia in real time and we get back a real nice little pull down that says, oh, we found this many recipes, we found this many ingredients, here's some other stuff we found. And they can click on each one of those to see the exact things. So here's a list of recipes that have the word lemon in them. If I wanted to search for ingredients, here I get a list of ingredients that take uh, recipes that have lemon in them, or lemon lime soda, or lemonade, and I can click through here. Um, 
So the goal is really that not only am I getting useful results for what I searched for, but I'm also being given an opportunity to explore. Um, that was really what we wanted everybody to do with the site was to be able to click around and see lots of interesting things once you found what you came to the site for. Um, now let's talk about how it works. Um, this is the JavaScript search code in its entirety. Um, and it's okay if you can't read it. Um, this top line here, index.search, that's what's doing all the hard work. Uh, that is an instance of the Algolia JavaScript client. We pass it a search term. It gives us back a bunch of results. Um, the rest of that code is just grouping those results into the different categories that you saw in the pull down. And that's it. That was all the code we had to write on the front end for the search. <laughs> Everything else was just making it look nice. On the back end, our Algolia index is grouped in lots of different ways. We have lots of different Algolia types. We have a type for recipes, we have a type for ingredients, we have some other miscellaneous types. And so this makes it easy to pull back lots of different kinds of results based on search terms, but also tying those results together, again, with like ingredients and recipes. And this is an example of what a recipe index record looks like. And you can see it's got the name, it's got the URL to the actual recipe page. Um, it's got a bunch of other metadata. And then we have some other things where like we have the complete list of ingredients inside the recipe index. So that's how we get that kind of back and forth sharing of the search data. As far as the settings go, we really didn't have to tweak very much. We were able to get away with the Algolia defaults on just about everything. Um, the only thing that we really changed as far as the ranking and sorting of results goes was to let recipe results float to the top um, because that's what most people were looking for and that's what this custom ranking does. Um, the searchable attributes we didn't have to touch at all. That's just the default again. Um, and then we also have the typo, to typo tolerance, which is a great thing. Um, as Tim mentioned in his, his presentation, it's super frustrating when you have to type something in exactly to get the results you want. And so the Algolia typo tolerance stuff is wonderful. Uh, we tweaked the settings here a little bit just to make it a little bit stricter than the default. Um, for our particular use case, we found that that gave better results for the recipe stuff. On other websites, uh, we've used the defaults and it's been just fine. And then last but not least, we have synonyms, which is another great thing where if you have lots of different related words, you can tell Algolia that those words are connected to each other um, to get back better results. And with cocktails and recipes and lots of other things, there are a lot of similar words that are related to each other. So you can see here we have like stir, stirring, stirred. We want all of those things to return the same results. This is also helpful if you have a typo that people make that's very common. Um, for example, in English, the word kernel, K-E-R-N-E-L, and the word kernel, C-O-L, O N E L are pronounced the same. Um, so we would get a lot of people coming in searching for kernel with a C when they were actually typing kernel with a K. So this lets us give them back the results they want in spite of all that. <clears throat> um, so the long and the short of it is this was a great solution for us. It gave us exactly the full featured search experience that we wanted. Um, it was super easy to set up on the Algolia side of things. Uh, they handled all of the hard parts of search um, and we just got to focus on our user experience and our, our layouts and everything else. So that is that. Uh, thank you all very much. I, again, I'll drop the link to this in the chat and if you have any questions, feel free to post them or ping me offline later. <laughs>